Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are reviewing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I've been putting lots of hours into the game. So without further ado, let's find out, was this not very effective or was it a critical hit? So this is a remaster of the original games which came out on the Nintendo DS back in Europe in 2007. And it's actually the first remakes to not be made by Game Freak, although the director of the original games was the director of this one, so I don't think it's affected the development too much. Just in case you're not sure of what Pokemon is, the game is a top-down RPG, and the game sees you take control of a new Pokemon trainer in the Sinnoh region using a team of Pokemon to collect your gym badges and also defeating the crime syndicate in this case it's Team Galactic. I'm going to start and talk about the art style straight away because when the game was first announced that was what caused some of the controversy. So obviously they've gone down this route of this chibi art style so like most people at first I was a little bit apprehensive as soon as I've started playing the game it's the closest feeling I've had to the original Pokemon games so I was what eight years old when those original Pokemon games came out and that nostalgia has really hit me I've played through all of the old games and nothing has kind of hit me the same way as it has done with this game it really is kind of going back to those original roots and it's kind of it's remastered and it looks fantastic even if I remove that nostalgia I've absolutely loved how it looks I think they've really hit the nail on the head with this one if there were any issues with it I think obviously I'd talk about them but I'm not noticing any problems I think obviously there is some personal preference I've said both from a nostalgic point of view and a non nostalgic point of view I think it looks absolutely great and I think it does pay real homage to those original games. Looking at the gameplay, they haven't moved too far away from the classic mechanics of Pokemon. One thing that is noticeable now is that the experience share is available from the start which can make the game a little bit too easy. Obviously for maybe younger kids who are playing the game it makes it easier for them obviously those people that have been playing this for a long time because obviously Pokemon has been around for you know nearly what 25 years now so it would have been nice just to have a simple on off um, mechanic for that so that if you want that experience share from the very beginning it's there if you don't it's off it's again it's just maybe personal preference but I felt it made the game a little bit too easy for me but I know that obviously they're trying to open this up for a wider audience so that's why they've had to do it. Now the biggest change of the game is to the poker watch so you'll know when you used to play those old games you had a member of your party it had to have cut, surf, um, what else was there, um, rock smash there were various moves that you needed to have in order to complete the game and progress through the game. Now, once you've defeated the gym leader and you unlock that move, you don't actually need to give it to a Pokemon anymore. It just goes on your Poker Watch. You go up to the rock, you go up to the bush, you press A, go through the little talker box thing, and it gets rid of whatever's in front of you or it helps you progress through the game so I was a little bit sad to see that go because I always knew you had a member of your party and it was probably going to be a Bidoof or some other Pokemon that you had to give these moves to so again it simplified the game it has made the game a little bit easier I remember playing and thinking I wish they got rid of that but then when it actually did come to it and they got rid of that it was a little bit sad so you'll notice as you're playing this game I would say it's a lot easier than it was from the originals. 
One thing I do really like is the new little menu reminder. So if you haven't played for a few days or you've just forgotten where you've got to go, pressing that X button brings up your little reminder of what you need to do. What, and then you go onto map and you've got that little flag there as well. And it's just going to tell you where to go. So I thought that was um, something that was really nice. You don't have to go through the whole, um, this is what you need to do, or maybe Googling what you need to do. It's just there directly in front of you when you go onto the menu. Something that has kind of confused me is the fact they've removed the fact you can see wild Pokemon, but they've also kept it in as well. So I'm not I'm not quite sure the reasoning behind this. I've tried to look it up, but I can't see any explanation. So when you're in the underground, um, and that's kind of the, this new wild area that you get the Explorer kit, you go into the underground, you can see all of those Pokemon there, and you can get some amazing Pokemon really early on in the game which is fantastic but then when you go back to just i guess the basic game we'll call it when you go back to the, the standard the basic game it goes back to that hidden pokemon so i'm not really sure why they've done half and half it, it doesn't really make sense to me because if someone likes it having them there on the screen they've got them all in the underground but then when they actually want to play the game they can't see the pokemon if someone likes the fact they can't see the Pokemon, they're playing through the main game, they can't see them, they kind of pop up randomly like they used to. But then when they want to go into the underground, all of the Pokemon are there. So it doesn't really make sense why they've done half and half there. But I guess if you like them, they're there. If you don't like them, they're not there. And vice versa, because they've done half one way and half the other. So it's just a little warning about that, that in the main game, it goes back to random pop-ups of Pokemon in the underground, in the wild area. You can see all the Pokemon there. I'm going to try and kind of sum up the game now. So, obviously we talked about the experience share. We talked about having the new Poker Watch, being able to do all those HMs and not having to give them to your Pokemon anymore. Looking back at it now, I think actually for me that's probably an improvement. I don't have the same amount of time that I used to have to be able to play Pokemon like I used to. So maybe I don't pick the game up for a few days. But now I can just press X on the menu and I can find out what I was doing before. And I can get straight back into it. Now the experience yet. Again, I don't have time to put someone at the front of my party who's a low level, take them out, put a new Pokemon there, build up the levels like we used to back in the day, but I can still build up my party and play through and have a lot of fun with that experience share from the very beginning. So although I maybe talked about them like they were negatives, looking back at it, I, I think it's it probably improved the gameplay for me and the experience for me. It probably is a little bit simple for some people, I would say that people who maybe want more of a challenge, this, this is going to be a bit too easy for them. If you're trying to introduce someone into Pokemon games who have never played before, I think this is a great starting point. If you've not got the time to play games as much as you used to, but you still want to try and play some Pokemon, again, I think this is a great game to try and get into. You've got it in handheld mode as well on the Switch, so you can kind of take it anywhere with you. So again... I think overall I would definitely recommend this to anyone who's kind of trying to get into Pokemon or used to play Pokemon but if you prefer maybe like Bravely Default 2 or you prefer really challenging JRPGs I think this is maybe one that you should uh, probably leave alone unless you've got that nostalgia from Pokemon like me. Thank you so much for watching. So those were just kind of my opinions and thoughts on the game. I hope that it's kind of helped you if you were maybe thinking about picking up the game. Let me know in the comments below what you've liked or disliked about the Pokemon game so far. Are you looking forward to the new one that's coming out on the end of January? Have you pre-ordered it yet? Because um, I have and I cannot wait to play it. I'm really excited to see how well that one plays. But don't forget, hit that like button, leave a comment. Subscribe if you're new. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, everyone.